Hey everybody, Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control. Tonight, we're going to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. <clears throat> it's going to be a, uh, of course I'm live, any questions that you have, feel free to ask, but I want to open it up with a comment that I had received on my, uh, one of my videos on mattress encasements. So, I had a question from, not necessarily a question, but more of a concern and a confusion around mattress encasements. One of my uh, YouTube watcher people, whatever, subscribers, um, had mentioned that because I do telephone consultations and it's uh, $95 for 45 minutes. So if you want to call me for 45 minutes and I'll talk to you and try to explain things more in depth about your specific problem, then you can do that. But tonight, I'm going to, hey, Mage, how are you? But tonight, I want to go over tonight tonight's show. So I run a 24-hour pest control business. And I have three children and a beautiful wife. And I have to spend time with my family at some point. And so the reason that I charge for my telephone consultations is because I have to have time to myself. But that's why I do these shows on Thursday nights for you guys to come here and ask me whatever you want. Uh, if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. I know I call it the bed bug show because it seems like that's all people know me for is for bed bug control. But I've been in pest control all my life, over 30 years. I know termites, bed bugs, cockroaches, silverfish, you know, box elder bugs, uh, earwigs, you know, some of the weird things I usually don't get a lot of questions on. But that's uh tonight I want to go over mattress encasements. So what the lady had said was she had mentioned that she was confused about my stance on mattress encasements. So I want to explain why I don't agree with mattress encasements as a form of bed bug control. The main reason being that mattress encasements should not be used as a uh, form of bed bug control to to kill off the infestation. A lot of people will use them thinking that they're going to, uh, whether they suffocate the bed bugs or they starve the bed bugs, uh, it's, it's almost impossible for that to occur because the mattress encasements, bed bugs can live for up to 18 months without a blood meal. So if you're expecting a piece of fabric to last for 18 months on your mattress or your box spring without ripping, that's just, that's, I've seen two, three hundred, four hundred dollar mattress encasements rip within nine months. So the problem is the way they work is you have to keep the mattress and the, and the box spring completely encased for the entire 18 months. You can't have a rip, you can't have a tear, you can't remove it to wash it. You can't, you know, you can't take it off the bed at all. And if it gets a rip or a tear, it's kind of negated the entire idea of a mattress encasement at all it's just it's as if uh you never had one on because the bed bugs can get out uh nymphs live about four months without a blood meal adults live about 18 months without a blood meal so what happens is when it does tear even if it's nine months later yeah the nymphs are dead but the adults are really 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 hungry and they're full ready to breed ready to get their blood meal ready to lay eggs and so uh, all they need is that blood meal to lay eggs, and then you've got the problem all over again. So this is why I don't recommend using mattress encasements to control bed bugs. Now, mattress encasements are not something I completely disagree with. I think that mattress encasements are a good, uh, a good thing if you are doing a preventative. So if you don't have bed bugs, and you're buying, say, an expensive mattress, and you're worried that maybe you'll bring bed bugs in one day in the future and infest your mattress or your box spring, then by all means, get yourself a mattress encasement, encase your box spring, encase your mattress, uh, replace it as needed, and keep it encased in that way to protect your investment. But as far as a way to actually eliminate bed bugs, I just don't think it's a very viable option. So I just wanted to bring that up tonight. I wanted to talk. I usually always open my show with some kind of a question that I was given, and she never really asked an actual question. She just posed a, a concern and that she was kind of confused with my video. Some of my videos, I tend to ramble, 
and I tend to bounce around from subject to subject to subject because there's a lot to cover in one video. I really should try to break my videos up into little bite-sized segments, maybe five minutes at a time, so that you can kind of get a little bit here and a little bit there, and maybe people wouldn't get so confused. But um, pest control is a lot more uh, uh, detailed. It's a lot more, uh, a lot more to it than most people realize. And so, um, for example, if you're going to do a general pest control job, like if you've got a customer who's got roaches or ants or fleas or whatever bug they've got, in order to control that specific bug, you really kind of need to know how they behave. You need to know uh, what they're doing, what, how, where they live, where they crawl, where they hide when they're not feeding. Um, you know, things like that. Is that those are the kind of things you kind of need to know about a bug's behavior so that you can target the areas the bugs are active. And so there's a lot more to pest control than just spraying a little bit of bug spray around and, you know, wishing for the best. So some of my videos tend to be a little long-winded. Um, I hope everybody's doing all right tonight. Sorry, itchy eye. Let's go over some of my other comments until more people kind of filter into the room tonight. Um, I do have a phone number, so for those that don't want to type their question in chat, uh, it is different from my actual business number because I prefer you'd call this number anyway if you want to ask me any questions about uh, YouTube or any YouTube questions. Uh, the number on the screen, which is the 434-509-0721, it is a Skype number. It will ring through my computer. If you call, you will be put live on the show right now. Um, so try to keep your questions very short and precise because I want to be able to get to everybody's question. So because I usually have about 30 to 50 people here asking questions every night, I want to make sure I can actually get to everybody's questions. So if you do decide to call in, uh, the way I'm going to do it is you can call in, you can ask a question, I will uh, hang up, and then I'll answer the question for everybody to hear, and then I'll go on to the next person. Just so you know, if you do call, I'm not trying to be rude, I'm just trying to give everybody a chance to ask a question. Um, so let's see, we've got some comments, uh, a couple people here. Jesus Cortez, he stops by every now and then. He might be here tonight. Uh, his says his his company charges thirty five hundred dollars for two to three follow ups, uh, with two to three follow ups bed bugs for a three bedroom apartment. That's pretty expensive. Uh, he had commented on one of my bed bug control videos where I actually give statistics on bed bugs. Um, let's see. I tried to get to some of the ones I haven't answered. Let's see. and because I try to tell people I will get to their questions um, let's see so how's everybody doing with the snowfall I'd like to know where everybody's from and if you've been dealing with some heavy snowfall here lately I know we got ice today in Virginia Let's see, what is this one? I recently moved into an apartment that had already been furnished. The sectional was loaded with bed bugs. I've had three treatments so far, and it seems to me that it's only killed a couple. My exterminator doesn't seem, doesn't seem, well, that's, that's rough to read. Uh, doesn't seem like they're doing the most to treat. Come to find out, they were all over the apartment. I asked them to spray all over, but they only tackled certain spots of the place. My question is, if you can see bed bugs hiding, as in see them with, with both, uh, as in seeing them, uh, is the infestation bad? Also, can bed bugs hide inside the couch, the inner part of the couch where the framework of the furniture is? Absolutely. The bed bugs can hide in the framework of the couch. They hide there all the time. In fact, I'm in the process right now of working through a course to try to teach people how to kill bed bugs. Um, I've gotten almost all of the videos finished for it. it I show 
how to inspect a bedroom for bed bugs to be sure you have bed bugs, how to inspect your living room for bed bugs to show you have bed bugs, how to inspect your car. That's the only one I've got left to do. Um, how to inspect and treat your car, how to inspect and treat your bedroom, how to inspect and treat your living room. And uh, it's about six to 10 videos total in content, uh, all with voiceover. Um, I'm actually doing the job, showing you how to do the job with all the tools I use to do the job and flipping all the furniture upside down, showing you exactly where to treat up close with the camera. I have so many cuts from here to there to there to there to show exactly how everything is done. And I think it's going to be really, really, really good. It's about maybe an hour, an hour, maybe an hour and a half worth of content. So with, uh, paperwork and everything that goes with it. It's going to be really, really good. I think it's going to help a lot of people understand uh, why exterminators aren't doing a very good job getting rid of bed bugs these days and how I'm doing it and why I'm so successful at eliminating bed bugs. So hopefully it will help everybody out. Um, so one of the things that I want to tackle with this specific question is a comment that they made about um, they don't think the exterminator is doing very much, that they only see them treat certain areas of their apartment. Um, a lot of times that has to do with the label and where you can and cannot treat. So you can't just spray pesticide all over the place. Like I was explaining earlier, you can't just go in and spray chemical on everything in the entire house. You can only spray where the bed bugs live, where they're active. That's the only spot that you can actually treat. For bed bugs. So if you think the bed bugs are living down behind the baseboards, you treat down behind the baseboards. If you think the bed, bed bugs are living in the bed, you treat in the bed. If you think the bed bugs are living in the closet around like your closet doors, your hinges and stuff, then you treat there, which they will hide there. Uh, Samantha Hannah says, hey, it's been a while since I've updated on my infestation. I had discovered at the end of October. I treated in November with Crossfire and I have yet to see any in months. I bought a second treatment, but have yet to use it. Thank you so much for your info. It helps so much. Well, thank you, Samantha. I really appreciate your comments. That's great to know that you were able to tackle your bed bug problem. So um, just to show, let's see. I don't, I do this. I try to do this every live stream because a lot of people don't know this. I'm going to post a link in the video description. Um, It's my page, so, and I'm actually going to get new links. I'm working on getting some new links for everybody that might even be even better than these links, some some better places, actually cheaper prices. Um, but I'm, I'm actually talking with a couple people now. But this is the link to my Amazon page. It's got a shop storefront. And so if you scroll down to the bottom of here, there's uh, bed bug supplies there. Now, the reason this is at the bottom of the list is because I need to really sort this list better. But if you go to bed bug supplies, now Samantha was talking about using Crossfire. There's a, a, a gallon of Crossfire, which I don't recommend anybody purchase unless you're like doing pest control on your own. But if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a little jug here. This is actually 13 ounce bottle of Crossfire. This is what I recommend to kill bed bugs. This is what I use to kill bed bugs. And right now it says it's 42, 42 92. But if you go over here, let's see, do they have cheaper price? Sometimes, oh yeah, see, there's one for thirty-seven fifty right there. So you can get it as cheap as thirty-seven fifty, brand new. So, um, and I don't know if that's prime delivery, free delivery or whatever, not sure. But that's what they use. So like I said, it, all of the pesticides that I use in my business, a lot of people don't know this about exterminators, is... The w price fluctuates with Crossfire. So it can be, you know, Hell Mage just asked if the price dropped on Crossfire. And I'm like, it, it's different. It, pesticides fluctuate kind of like the stock market, you know, uh, in the months where people are doing more bed bug services and they may be buying more Crossfire, the price of the Crossfire is more expensive. Um, in the off season, when bed bugs aren't as prevalent, when people aren't traveling as much, Crossfire goes goes down because people aren't buying as much crossfire. So it works a lot like the stock market supply and demand and uh, pesticides have always been that way. 
But um, but yeah, thirty five is actually I've got a uh, I'm in the works with um trying to get a few links with uh, a couple of websites that actually offer it cheaper even than thirty five dollars. You'll be able to get it at the price that I that I am charged for it because I buy so much, I buy such a large quantity because I'm in pest control. It's what I do for a living. Um, that I can get cheaper prices because the more you buy, the cheaper it is. And so I'm trying to get it hooked into where you guys can get my same deals, um, you know, that I get on it. So I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It takes a lot. I was actually, I, I, I uh, emailed the person um, maybe last week, and I just haven't had time to do anything with my links or anything this week. I've been really busy. And the ice has been a pain to have to deal with. So anyway... That that's that like I said, Sam used uh, Samantha Hannah used Crossfire, and she was able to get rid of her bed bugs. Everything I use, you can buy yourself. I don't use any restricted use pesticides or anything like that. So everything I buy, you can buy, with the exception to Canada. Canadians have a problem being able to get Crossfire. Now you're you're you can't buy Crossfire in New York. You can't have it shipped to New York State. Um, I think there's a couple other states that you can't get it shipped to, um, but I know New York for sure. I, um, you, but it's easier to get it if you live in the states because people have fam family and friends that live in other states. So Canadians have a little bit more of a problem getting it over the border. So through customs and everything like that, and because it is a pesticide that's manufactured in the United States, a lot of Canadians won't aren't able to get it at all. So um, I'm working on trying to figure out a way that I can help you. If there are any Canadian exterminators out there that have any kind of advice they'd like to give me or my uh, viewers, I would be very appreciative to know of any chemicals that you may be using in Canada that you know a do-it-yourselfer might be able to get. One of the reasons that I do my shows that I'm on you know, YouTube is because I like to help people. Um, you guys are, you know, I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. And, you know, the thing is, the do-it-yourselfer is never going to hire an exterminator. And so it's best to teach you how to do it yourself so that you don't hurt yourself, you don't hurt your friends or your family. Um, pesticides need to be treated with respect. It's why I started, you know, doing this at the beginning of all my streams i put this up for a little while so people see it i put it at the beginning of all of my um all of my videos now i put it at the beginning of every video because i don't want people to think that pest pesticides are are something you could just play around with you need to have respect for pesticides and you need to follow the label don't disobey the label and that's why i'm here to teach you how to do it correctly and follow the label so that nobody gets hurt um, you know, you go in and you read these, you go watch these videos on YouTube where people rebuild whole, you know, big block motors and they're lifting these motors out with the cherry pickers and stuff like that. And, uh, I learned how to rebuild my own motor. I, I have a 1975 duster that, uh, I rebuilt myself and, you know, you can learn just about anything you want to on YouTube, but the videos you watch, they'll tell you, you know, this is something that's really difficult. This is really heavy. Be really careful. You don't break your hand. You don't, you know, <laughs> drop the motor on your foot and break your foot. So these are pesticides. You know, I, I, I give you advice based on what I do. I'm just telling you things that I've done that's successful for me. And you should always practice caution when using any type of anything that kills anything else. Um, so I don't have very many viewers tonight. I don't know what everybody's doing. Maybe, uh, uh, oh, Pestwork says, is Crossfire in the aerosol form able to be shipped to those areas or just the liquid jug? Um, I don't recommend Crossfire in aerosol form. I mean, if it's all you can get, it's better than nothing. But if you can get the, pes the pesticide uh, concentrate, I recommend getting the pesticide concentrate because you can mix it yourself and it's going to work better. The problem with Crossfire in a can is that you've got things that are on that are in the Crossfire that aren't on the label like propellants and things that that 
will cause chemical breakdown and the pesticides won't last as long and you can't treat like you really need to treat with the um the crossfire aerosol now that being said raid actually has a crossfire can and i wish i had i thought i thought about this before this question came up because the same thing came up last week but raid actually does have a crossfire mix i think it's sold at home depot and it is crossfire in a can basically but um and so raid i know they're paying to have use of the patent and also harris is paying to have use of the patent but the Harris product is a pre-mixed in a jug, and the uh, Raid product is aerosol. And so you can get the aerosol Crossfire under a different brand name label. It doesn't have to be an MGK product. But uh, like I said, I only recommend it if it's your only choice. You know, If you can get the liquid and mix it in a gallon sprayer, then that's the way you really need to do it because you can actually, I feel like you have better control on how much pesticides you use that way. And the uh, and you don't have the propellants that are going to cause the chemicals to break down. Uh, anytime you put propellants in a can, the, the pesticide never lasts as long as what you could actually mix yourself. Just personal experience. Maybe Crossfire is different, but I've heard a lot of bad things about the actual uh, aerosol Crossfire. And not just that, but Bedlam and all kinds of different you know aerosols that just aren't very effective. Um. Now, if you do live in Canada and you can get bedlam, that would be another good choice to be able to eliminate uh, bed bugs. So you might look into that. The problem with bedlam, and I'll show you what it looks like. Let's see if they have it on Amazon. Um, bedlam, there's bedlam. So, Let's see, will it show me the label like it did that other one? That was really nice. No, not really. But that's Bedlam. That's another um, bed bug uh, aerosol that uh, it kills bed bugs and their eggs. Two week residual on wood, ceramic surfaces, and carpet. Uh, reduces bed bug hatch in both susceptible and some resistant strains of bed bugs for surface spray application. But the problem with Bedlam is bed bugs are actually getting immune to it now. So. Um, Detra Mason says, I don't want the expensive BNG sprayer. Do you have any other suggestions? So I'll go over that right now. Things that, uh, um, I don't want to go to Amazon. I want a pesticide sprayer. So I, I think I went over this last week. I think I did. I'm not sure. I know I've been going over this with my son. I'm actually in the process of making a video about generic sprayers, but um, you'll want one that has different tips. I think he actually took pictures. I, let me see if I've got my phone. Um, he had saved. Hey, Rory, can you get my tablet? Yeah. He had actually taken some screenshots of some different uh, jugs. I can show you some pictures of them as soon as he brings me my tablet. Because um, I've been working on a video for you guys. Let's see, is it, do I sound all right? Is everything coming through all right? I'm trying a little bit of a different setup tonight on my microphone, and I'm not really sure if it's coming through well or not. So just let me know if you can't hear me very well, anybody. Um, but yeah, I'll answer your question about the jug in just a minute, Detra. Uh, Gary Carr, it worked for me to, maybe that's how I got rid of infested, was from the mattress and box spring encasements because the zipper busted. Um, Pestwork says, do you have any issue with mixing product in cold water? No, you should use warm water. Um, I typically use warm water every time I mix, mix pesticide because a lot of the newer pesticides now, especially micro-encapsulated, tend to be really gunky, and warm water um, mixes better. Uh, in fact, a lot of the labels even call for warm water. They, uh, they, I've noticed a lot of the wording on the label. When you mix, it actually calls to use warm water rather than cold. And uh, I always shake it up all the time. So um, uh, you mix. So I've got a video on how to mix. Um, let's see. If we go to YouTube. YouTube. 
Okay, youtube.com slash greenacrespc. I got the, I finally got my title. Got an awesome title, easy to remember. But if you go here and after you click the subscribe button, you, you go right down below the subscribe button right here and you type in uh, uh, mix crossfire. And you could just type crossfire, but there's the very first video if you type mix. So here's a video that I did on how to mix crossfire. Man, that thing's loud. And so if you go through, see, I put that at the beginning of all my videos now. Because, <laughs> um, let's see, if you go through about halfway in, about three, four, four minutes, there we go. And you wait, and there you go. All right, so this is warm water right here. This is actually how I mix Crossfire. And so you mix it half full. You pour half a gallon of, cro of water, which I think I poured a little bit more than a half gallon. And then you pour the whole contents. That's, I told you, it's that bottle right there that I use. I use Crossfire. This is, I'm actually on a bed bug job. And my son is filming me mix it right here because I always mix before I do the job, and so and I typically do use an entire gallon, uh, it, it, whether well I might maybe half a gallon it depends on the size of the house. I say I say a gallon. I used a gallon there because it was a big house, but um, and then you pour it the rest of the way with water, and after you screw your lid on, you shake it really really good, um. I don't do follow-up unless a customer asks me for one. So Pestwork says, uh, so are you just doing uh, one and done 30-day residual with your treatments for customers or do you have follow-up treatments? I don't have actual scheduled follow-up treatments unless the customer actually asks for a follow-up and then I will perform a follow-up treatment. But um, I don't charge for follow-ups. I charge very inexpensive bed bug rates so that the customer, if they you know, I give them 30 days. The, res the residue lasts for 30 days, but I usually give them about 50 days to call me because that gives them plenty of time to make sure they don't have any more bed bugs. If they continue to have bites after the 30th day, I give them two weeks to call me back and, and ask me to come back out and treat again. But it's not very common. It's a very rare, rare thing to do. And some people just automatically will say, just go ahead and sign me up for a second treatment anyway because I think I'm going to need it. And honestly, when I go back on those jobs, I don't see live bugs. I very rarely find live bed bugs ever. It just doesn't happen very often with Crossfire. I've been really pleased with the product. MGK doesn't pay me a dime. They are the makers of Crossfire. They produce the chemical. They ship the chemical. I buy it from them. But I've just been so happy with it, I tell everybody about it. I don't make any money off of Crossfire whatsoever. Um, now, if you go to my Amazon page and you go to my affiliate page and you, you, know, you click these links in my affiliate page here, then yes, I will make like 3% commission off of you know, whatever I sell here. But you don't have to buy from here. You can buy anywhere. You know, Anything you buy here just goes to support the YouTube channel and everything like that. Uh, all of my stuff that I make from whether it's a YouTube monetization or the you know Amazon page that I've got, that all goes to just push YouTube even better and try to advertise better so you guys can see my see me more, you know, so everybody can see what I'm trying to do because I really wish more people knew about my channel. And one way you can help with that is just by liking this video specifically here. There's 13 people here in the in the channel tonight, and I've only got uh, five likes, so. You know, if we can get 10 more, that would be fantastic. Um, anyway, let me jump back up here to uh, Samantha says, I use the Chapin sprayer. I think it was around 40 bucks for multiple uses. It may not be the best deal, but for just a couple uses, mine has worked just fine. And that's what I recommend. If you're just going to do a one-time kind of a spray, maybe just to get rid of your bed bugs, you could just get a cheap little plastic sprayer, and that's all you really need. But the problem is, is that you don't want to use a sprayer you've already used before. You want to buy a brand new sprayer. You don't want to risk mixing into a tank that something else has been in because the crossfire doesn't work well. It doesn't make friends with other chemicals. It's a loner. So treat it like a lone chemical and only use it by itself. Um, 
Ryan says, hey, Jason, if you mix a gallon and use half, how long does the product last in your BNG? Um, if I mix a gallon, I use the gallon. I don't use, I don't let it sit more than a day. Um, typically, if I'm mixing an entire gallon of Crossfire, it's because I either have a really big bed bug job. Now, that job there was a two-story house with a full basement, and there were one, two, three, four, four beds, a pull-out couch, um, several couches and love seats, pull-out couch, and two recliners. And so I used the whole thing in the house. I actually used the entire the entire gallon. But uh, I will mix the whole gallon and do like two or three jobs in a day. Sometimes I do two bed bug jobs. Sometimes I do three bed bug jobs. But I don't, I don't let it sit in the tank. I don't like that it separates from the water. It turns into this gunky, gooey crap in the bottom of your tank. You need to use it, use it up, and rinse out your tank. So you don't let it just sit there. It's gross. And it makes this... In the screens of the BNG wand, it turns into this like, like jelly almost. It's really kind of nasty, and it gunks up all your parts. So it's better to just use it, clean it, and get rid of it, and wait for the next job to come in. Uh, Pestwork says, "Is Crossfire the only product you use, or are you using any insecticide dust like Semexa or any type of aerosol product like Alpine?" Uh, I use Alpine WSG. I use this right here. I, I actually do use this for my bed bugs. So the way that I do my bed bug services is me and my son go in to do a bed bug job and he will treat the baseboards with Alpine throughout the entire house. And I use Crossfire on the mattress, box spring, headboard, footboard, bed rails, and all the other furniture and any luggage, book bags, and things like that, and even in the car. And that's the way that I, I do my bed bug service. Now, in homes that I have a follow-up on where I end up actually having to do a follow-up. I assume the bed bugs are starting to get immune to WSG and I do the entire house with crossfire only. But that is a, um, a rare thing. It doesn't happen all the time. Uh, but you know, if I do get a call back, I don't use Alpine WSG on the second treatment. I do crossfire in the entire house because uh, there, is, there are studies that point to Alpine WSG creating a bit of an immunity in bed bugs and so I don't like the bed bugs are getting resistant to it so I don't make it a practice to use it on any follow-ups I just do crossfire and some houses that are really 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 bad where you go in and they're just everywhere I don't do anything for crossfire either um, but alpine wsg is a pretty good solid chemical it works really good on bed bugs too I've had really good results with it on bed bugs in fact before I knew about crossfire Alpine WSG will allow you to treat everything that Crossfire does except the mattress. That's the only thing you can't treat with it. And I was getting really good results just using that and uh, Alpine dust in the wall. So. Very good to know. Samantha says. And then Miriam says, thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you too for showing up. I really appreciate everybody showing up tonight and all the questions. That's what I'm here for. I'm actually surprised. You know, I've been on YouTube for four and a half years. I didn't start this live stream thing till maybe three years, two years. But I've been doing it steady now for almost, well, almost a year now. I've tried to keep to my schedule on every Thursday nights. So um, it's been nice to talk to you guys. I like to be able to connect with my viewers. I like to be able to answer questions. I like to, you know, I'm, I'm here any question at all, you know, that's why I said the show tonight is anything goes, you know, it's, it's bed bug show live tonight's topic. Anything goes ask away. So anything, just ask me anything. Um, but give me just a minute. I've been drinking this water right here and I've got to run and use the bathroom. I will be right back.
there we go. So, Ryan says, have you watched any of Frank the Pest Geek videos? Your thoughts if you have, and I have not. Have most of you here treated your own home? Weird science. Weird silence. Sorry. <laughs> yes, yes. I put this. I mute my microphone just like this. Yeah, so you don't hear me walking through the house and people talking amongst themselves and stuff here. Sorry about that. So let's see. Frank the Pest Geek. Who is this guy? Let me look him up. I don't. I don't tend to watch a lot of YouTube videos. Um, people will send me a video from time to time asking me questions about, you know, this, that, or the other, and I'll watch it sometimes. But most of the pest control stuff that I look at are actually articles. I like to read, and I will sit and read things about bed bugs, about, you know, crickets, silverfish. Uh, I will look up all kinds of different things. And uh, I don't really care to sit and watch videos on pest control. But um, I have watched a lot of those stupid Facebook ads where they show a guy treating for bugs and he's not even wearing gloves or anything. And that kind of irks me. And I'm like, I can't believe they're selling people this kind of stuff on Facebook. But it's because, you know, people just don't know. It's like that's not even safe. But let's see. Is it the Pest Geek podcast? Is that that guy? Is that who you're talking about? I think I do know that guy. So yeah, see, he's got a lot of vlogs, blogs, and stuff. And he's got a pillow that says subscribe up there in the corner. That's pretty cool. I'd get me an on-air little thing and hang up behind me. But is there a light you can use to see any bugs like UV light that just has dirty places, spots, and holes? Yeah, so um, it's going to freak you out if you do this, but that's why I have this UV light here. You could buy this UV light in these glasses and you could see like urine tracks from mice and you could see where bed bugs have been and stuff like that. So yeah, and it's cheap. It's like $13. It's like, it's really cheap, but it's a UV light. See, it shows like pet stains and all kinds of stuff. So yeah. Yeah, but it'll gross you out. You take it into a hotel room, you'd be surprised how many of those comforters they don't wash and what, what's actually on them. Or the sheets, for that matter, if you have even you know had your sheets washed before you were there last, whoever was there. Um, thank you from New York, says... Um, Stealth Woman says, is there a light? Oh, I already read that. Ryan said, he's just a guy... That has a plan of charging, changing the pest control world. Yes, that's him. Okay, yeah. I would love to check. That's that's my goal is to change the way things are done. It's a pipe dream, honestly. I just wish more people were honest. I um, and I don't think. Let me change that. That makes it sound horrible. I don't think pest control as a business is dishonest. I think a lot of the people that perform pest control. Not necessarily the owners or, you know, like me. I'm an owner. I own my company. I could hire plenty of people to work under me, and I wouldn't even have to do the work. The problem is is that I've got a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience, and I don't feel like the um, – I feel like the pest control industry – so, like, right now we're going into spring. It's the end of February, going into March. We're getting ready to start springtime, and all of your big name brand companies are going to start hiring guys to go out and door knock neighborhoods. And sell business because they're going to get all these calls. They're going to get these heavy influx of calls, and they're going to have to keep the work going. They got to keep the workflow moving because otherwise, I mean, not being able to go out and do the job, you know, is just as bad as not doing the job well because you're not doing the job at all. And word gets around, and people are like, oh, don't call him. He's too busy. He doesn't have the time to get to you. And so that's not good either. So, what a lot of these guys do is they hire on you know, 10, 15, 20, sometimes even 30 or 40 guys right off the bat to go out and do pest control, and they don't really know what they're doing. They're working under someone else's license, and they're just not, they don't understand what they're actually doing to be able to perform pest control. They don't know how bugs behave. They don't know how the chemicals work. And so I just feel like they're not, 
educated enough and they and the companies that hire these guys don't have enough time to educate them because it takes time to learn you can't just know things from a book within 30 minutes and then go out and do pest control that's not the way it works um Del detris says what do you do about your clothes I don't want to wash and dry all those clothes. Okay, so I recommend drying your clothes. I don't recommend washing your clothes. I recommend drying your clothes and checking your lint trap. If you find bugs, and you will find bed bugs, if you have bed bugs in your clothes, you will find bed bugs in the lint trap. So check your lint trap for bed bugs. If you don't have bed bugs in your lint trap, your clothes are clean, put them away. Um, I now, if, if the bed bugs are living in your dressers and your chest of drawers and you've treated your chest of drawers, so I go over this and I wrote a book about bed bugs and I actually go over this in this section about, because um, it's about bed bugs, cockroaches, and fleas, and there's a section in there about uh, cockroaches, about brown banded cockroaches. Um, brown banded cockroaches will live in your dressers and your chest of drawers and your nightstands. And this rule applies to bed bugs as well. If you're worried about bed bugs might be living living in your other furniture other than your bed, like your nightstands, chest of drawers, dressers, places like that, then take all of your clothes out of your dresser, treat the dresser, allow the chemical to dry, and then you know while you're drying your clothes, you could be you know allowing the chemical to dry in your dresser, and then uh, take the clothes, check and make sure you don't have any bed bugs in them, fold them up, put them back in the dresser. A lot of people will say no, keep them in bags outside and live basically like a bag lady for, you know, however long it takes to kill your bed bugs. And that's absolutely not what you what you have to do. You if you treat inside your dresser, uh, the bed bugs are naturally not going to want to live in the dresser. They're not going to want to get a blood meal from the dresser. They can't get blood from the dresser. They're going to want to come to the bed. If you treat your mattress, treat your box spring, uh, vacuum regularly every day. Um and clean up all the dead bed bugs and even live ones if you see them suck them up get rid of them and then you're going to get rid of your bed bug problem a lot sooner a lot quicker and you don't have to worry about bed bugs living in your clothes they don't naturally want to live in your clothing they want to live near you the reason the bed bugs have spread to your dressers chest of drawers nightstands and places is because bed bugs have a very hostile reproductive cycle the males actually penetrate through the female's body and if and if if they mate more than twice, the female can die. So they will go into other furniture in the house. Um, so I don't think you need to really, I know it's a long way around the question, but I don't really think you need to wash and dry all of your clothes. You just need to dry them, and the ones that you find that are infected with bed bugs, wash those and then dry them again. High heat, always in high heat dryer. Ryan says, I like his stuff. He's big on IPM, dealing with small businesses, kind of getting all small businesses to work together against the big guys. Uh, Pestwork says, is bed bugs the only thing you do, or do you do everything? I do everything. Everything. Um, I mean, if you go to my channel, let's go back to YouTube again. In the world, you, there we go. YouTube.com slash Green Acres PC. And it works. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so anyway, if you go to my videos here, these are all the videos. Now, these are my live streams. I've been doing a lot of live streams lately. I did not, I'm sorry, I did not have a video for this Tuesday. I've just been really busy. But if you go to my videos, you've got uh, all of my live streams here, you've got, you know, this is the customer is the boss, uh, ants, termites, spiders, uh, cross, how to mix crossfire, you got the bed bug show here, all of my VODs, I save all of the live streams, so you can always go back and watch them. If there's a question that you wanted to go back and watch again, you can go rewatch it. Um, I've got videos on moving, how to deal with moving in bed bugs. I have them on mice, um, you know, face masks, because that was a hot topic there for a little while. Um, hair loss, uh, heat treatments and why they don't work, how to identify bed bug bites, uh, bed bugs and alcohol. I've got lots. I mean, look, see the videos. Look at this. Look at that. Isn't that nuts? That's crazy. That's crazy. And then all the way down to here.
and there's my first one. And this is what everybody typically, typically that's what everybody finds me because of that video. But anyway, I've come a long way in four years. These are really, look at these, this is, these were my old live streams. But wow, things have changed a lot. I've gotten a little better at my video editing. Um, so, Ryan says, how do you deal with customers who show you bites on their legs and you find no evidence of bed bugs and they're not getting them in a lint trap? Um, okay. One, I'm not a doctor. I cannot identify your bugs based on the bites you get. But um, check for carpet beetles and see if they have carpet beetles. Check for ants. Um, that's one of the things I'm actually, I started, uh, filming a video uh, a couple days ago about, uh, just couldn't get the, I couldn't get it right. I, I really, I want to do it. I think it needs to be said. I think it needs to be done, but I go over different bugs that can bite you that aren't bed bugs because bed bug bites, bed bug bites, like, let me, so let's, let's do a Google search. Let's do a Google search. Bed bug bites. Let's look at some images here. So, all right. So see this, this right here, this is a cluster of bites. They say these are bed bug bites. And, but these, these bites here, one, two, three, they're kind of far away, but they are saying these are bed bug bites. These could easily be flea bites. This could be flea bites. This could be poison ivy. This could be flea bites here. I have had this bite. I have had bites on my legs that I know were caused by fleas that I actually asked the I asked a group of pest control guys on Facebook and I said can you please help me identify these bites what bit me over 50% of the people in the group said that it was that uh, that answered my question over 50% of the people said that it was bed bugs um to go get that money is what they said and, uh, you know, about 40% of the people said that you can't identify bug, bed bu uh, bug bites because everyone has a different reaction, which is true. That's the right answer. But they were fleas. They weren't bed bugs at all. They were fleas. But because they resembled a bed bug bite, I thought, hey, I'm going to post this on social media and just see what people say because it actually was fleas. So I, the, the moral of the story is you can't go on bites alone. You really have to try to find some evidence. And if you haven't had evidence of bed bugs, it's probably something else. Go around outside the window and look for ants. Ants will bite people. Um, let me I, let me tell you a story though, real quick. Um, about a year ago, uh, my daughter, she was six. She went with me on a bed bug inspection. Um, I spent an hour and a half trying to find bed bugs. The guy showed me a picture of a bed bug on his phone. I know he had bed bugs. He said he threw that one away, but that's a picture of a bed bug that he had found there just a few minutes before I got to the house. Um, he had bed bugs. I couldn't find the bed bugs. I spent an hour and a half looking everywhere I could possibly look. The bed was clean. No bed bug droppings. The corners of the box spring, no bed bugs, no droppings. No droppings anywhere. No signs he had bed bugs at all. My daughter, in, while I was talking to him, trying to explain to him that I could not find any bed bugs, but we would go ahead and mix the chemical and we would do the job, she found a bed bug in about 10 minutes of looking on the mattress. It was actually on the mattress, underneath the bubble seam of the mattress. So just because you can't find a bed bug doesn't mean they're not there. And if the customer wants you to do a bed bug job, you do the bed bug job because it's what the customer wants. And more than likely, you're going to kill anything that's that's biting the customer anyway. You know, you try to explain to them that you can't find them, that you, you don't know where they're living, but sometimes that's just the way bed bugs are. That if it's just one or two, you can still get bit like like this. You know, you can get this many bites from just one or two bed bugs. This many. 
it's not, you know, 20 or 30 bed bugs. It's just maybe one or two doing this. So that's how I deal with it. I had a strange year this year. I had a lot of people with scabies. We are not doctors. Oh, yes, that's hard. Um, do I spray crossfire on top of my bed? You spray crossfire. You take all the sheets, all the covers, all the mattress encasements, everything off. You have a bare mattress and box spring. You treat the mattress around the, the beaded um, the uh, seam of the mattress. Sorry, it's been a long day. All the way around the seam of the mattress, both the top and the bottom of the seam, that's where you want your heaviest concentration and anywhere that there are seams on the mattress you want to treat. Uh, you don't have to completely surface area treat the whole mattress. You just have to treat the areas that the bed, that the bed bugs are going to live. Um, and then you're, wanna, you're going to want to flip your box spring, treat inside the box spring, around the all the seams around the box spring, inside the box spring take the felt all the way off the bottom of the box spring treat it inside the box spring all around the springs and everything the bed frame headboard footboard everything else gets treated it's great you're able to get the word out i would not have the time six kids i have three kids my wife is amazing and she allows me to do this she's she's amazing and she does it was you know it's her idea to take our business 24 hours it was her idea to do the, the YouTube. All of this is her. And she's sitting right here, and I, I really dedicate everything to her. In fact, my book, I've got a little bitty page right in the very front of the book. I dedicate the whole book to her. I dedicate my entire, just where I'm at today is because of my wife. She's amazing, and I'll tell everybody that. She's the best woman in the world. Um, how, and we're right off of Valentine's Day, so I can say that. It, it, happy Valentine's Day, you know, late, but, you know. <laughs> Um, I just spray crossfire on the sides of my bed and the bottom. Yeah, so typically you have to actually take your bed apart to do a, a really good bed bug job and do like I said. In fact, I've got a video. If you go here to my video, to my YouTube channel, and then you subscribe to it, and after you subscribe to it, you click down here and you type extensive. And that's the very first video. Most extensive bed bug treatment. In fact, you don't even have to type extensive because extensive is a just search bed bug. Um, I think my computer's locking up on me. But anyway, you can just search bed bug and it'll give you all these bed bug videos. It's only like a 15 minute video. But if you go here and you click this video, that I actually took that picture with my camera. But if you go in here and you look, see how I've got the bed actually up off of the bed frame? And I'm talking to the camera a little bit. I got it muted. So, and then we we move on to, well, after the ad plays. Um. So moving here to the living room. Right here. And we flip the couch. And see, this this is what I said. This is hard. It's hard. I did this one by myself. Now my son goes with me. He would have been on the other side flipping the couch. But see, a lot of these couches, and I like this couch. These are my favorite because even though it's a recliner, the backs open up. See how they open like that? You can get in those really well. And I and like all around here where the Velcro is, I, there were eggs in here. You can't really see them too well on the camera, but you can treat down inside these boxes because they open, which is really nice when they're upholstered that way. And we he didn't have to throw away the couch. In fact, there's a sectional in this room in here that was really a pain to treat, but man, I can remember that job like it was yesterday. But how often do I need to apply Crossfire? Um, once a month is how often you need to if you need to retreat. It's once like every 30 to 40 days. Ryan says, I tell people the same thing. I just want to check myself that I'm saying the same as others in the industry. I just try to be honest as possible so many guys in the industry give us a bad name. Um, Detra Mason says, this is so awesome. I'm going to try to treat my home. I bought the Crossfire. I need the Alpine. You don't have to get Alpine. You can just do the whole house with Crossfire. That's why I recommend it because there's no reason to alternate chemicals around. If the Crossfire is what you got, just use that. You'll be fine just using that. Alpine is a good 
overall general pesticide. So you could use Alpine. And let me just go. Uh, I'm just going to keep this on my Amazon page so I can show you because uh, it's easier. But this is the Alpine right here. You can see it. Uh, you can use it for spiders. Um, stink bugs. It's good for stink bugs. Um, it's good for it's good for cockroaches. I don't have it listed there. Not not on the front page anyway. It's good for bed bugs. It's good for fleas. It's good for ants. You know, lots of things Alpine's good for. Lots of things. So you can use it, and if you use it around your baseboards and stuff, it's going to kill bugs other than just bed bugs. Um, so Mr. or MC Roxas says, how long does it take to starve a bed bug? 18 months. Uh, if you had an infestation and went on vacation for a month, would you be fine? No, you would not. It takes 18 months to starve an adult bed bug. Pest works. Do you talk about what you charge for treatments? Obviously, we are all in different parts of the country. Oh, yeah. I mean, so my website has the price right on the front page. If you go to greenacrespc.com, I tell the world what I charge. So this is my web page. Now, this is my general pest control. This is not bed bugs. This is general pest control. But I broadcast it right there because I feel like if you're going to call me, I want you to know what you're going to pay a month right off the top. I would rather people just know, and then if it's not for them, they don't waste their time. I don't haggle. I don't lower my prices. I don't price war. I don't. I just I charge what it costs me to do the job, and if people want you know a low-ball price, they call somebody else. So, But... To do a bed bug job, I, start, I charge um, $650 on a one-time treatment. And if the customer needs a follow-up treatment, I charge $325. And that's what I charge. Um, it's, quite, it's, it's quite inexpensive when you compare it to the market. A lot of people are getting $3,500 to treat a house for bed bugs, and I charge $650. But I am... I just feel like I can do it for that. I can make money doing it that way. I feel like it's a fair price. It's a lot of work. And it's basically ballpark like a termite job kind of price or maybe like a pre-treat or something like that is the way that I price them. I know how much work is in the job and I've got my son. He helps me. If I didn't have a helper, I'd probably have to charge more because it is a lot of work. But I would recommend anyone doing pest control uh, – that if you were to do a bed bug job and you're thinking about adding pest control to your business, you need someone to help you do the work. Because if you're going to do work like I do work, when you see me flipping those couches and turning those beds over and stuff like that, that's a lot of backbreaking work. You absolutely will injure yourself if you don't have help. So I absolutely recommend helping, getting somebody to help you. Um, in fact, if you're going to do this on your own and you're wanting to treat your own house for bed bugs, it's not a bad idea to have somebody help you out. Because it is really difficult work. It's probably the most labor-intensive thing I've ever done. And I've done a lot of stuff as far as termites and stuff. It's pretty labor-intensive. How long does it take to starve? Okay. Uh, there's a bug which is biting me all over my body. I had an exterminator check my home. Let's go with this one. Let's switch you up to that one now. So, there's a bug which is biting me all over my body. I had an exterminator check my home and confirmed it wasn't bed bugs. I've tried using Alpine, but I'm still getting bitten. Not sure what to do. Hmm. Have you tried checking with a doctor just to see if the bites are something they might be able to tell you what it is? Because it might be something else. It might be a reaction to something. It may not be a bug at all. Um, Ryan says Alpine is my go-to for ants inside. Oh, yeah, it's really good. Inside and out, but um, outside, one of the best things to use is uh, uh, fipronil around the outside. Um, MC Roxas says, do you, uh, do you do any outdoor pest control like for agriculture? No, not really. I do bagworms. So if people have like bagworms getting on their trees and stuff, which it's getting close to bagworm, actually... I think bagworms already passed a few months ago. But, um, yeah, so I do bagworms. That's the only thing I do, agriculture. Do you ever travel outside of the state? Nope. I'm only licensed in Virginia. 
Um, I'm considering getting bed bug dogs and maybe traveling out of state to do inspections that way, but that's all I can do. But I can't do, I can't do out of state work. I'd, I'd lose my business. It's too much of a risk um, to, to do anything licensed out of state because I'm not licensed out of state. I'm only licensed in Virginia. So, so let's see. So I've got 10 thumbs up. I got one thumbs down. Sorry, upset you. If anybody wants to hit the like button, I've got 15 viewers. So there's a few people that could just hit that thumbs up. I have some people that really don't like me on here and they dislike all my videos, but that's that's okay. I want them to, to feel, feel, feel important that they got their voice heard. Thirty nine hundred in New York. I tell you, the most expensive price was twelve. Was it twelve? I think it was twelve thousand dollars, and that was out of uh, Woodbridge. Was the most expensive one I've heard. Uh, Forty nine hundred is the standard for one visit. Um, I need someone in Georgia. They charge three fifty a room, and see that's one of the things. That's why. See, I charge six fifty. Now that sounds really. And it really is cheap if you think about it, because if we pull up a calculator here, so let's close this window. Let's just close it down. I should have minimized it because I'm going to pop it up in a minute, probably. So if you've got 350 a room, let's say you have three bedrooms. That's $1,050 for a one-time treatment. That's a lot of money, but it's not... It's not really much more than what I charge when you take the overall job. So it's $400 more to do it that way. So the problem is when you get into other rooms of the house. So let's say it's 10, 50, and that's what you're paying for three bedrooms. But are they going to do your living room? Are they going to do your you know, your kitchens and your dining room? Are they going to treat the baseboards throughout the entire house? Because I've been in houses where bed bugs were in every room, including the kitchen, including the dining room. They were actually in it. I found bed bugs in dining rooms. I've seen bed bugs in foyers. I've seen bed bugs in other places than the bedroom. So, in fact, it's really common to find bed bugs in the, the living room. So, are they charging you another 350 for the living room? Because it's a lot to flip over couches and stuff, too. That's a lot of work. Since you see so many homes with different types of insects, do you have issues eating out? Yes. And do you like eating at buffets? No, not really. I don't like... You know, I have problems eating at a lot of restaurants. I don't like to eat out at Chinese restaurants. I don't like to eat out at Mexican restaurants. I don't like to eat at Mediterranean restaurants. I don't like to eat fast food because these restaurants I've been in and they're just absolutely disgusting. In fact, some of the things I've read since a lot of restaurants don't have sit-down dining right now and they're not the, – the inspectors are stretched so thin. A lot of inspectors aren't even going to restaurants right now that – I don't really like the idea of eating out at all because a lot of them have slacked on their cleanliness. Um, but you go to a buffet, and I've seen this almost every single time that I have gone to a buffet where somebody's child is not being taken care of, it's not being watched, and they're just going up there and they're sticking their hand in every bit of the food, just barehanded, fisted, after they just picked a made a booger or something, and they're going up there and they're grabbing and they're grabbing and they're grabbing all the food. Now, see, I watch my kids. My kids don't do that crap. I don't let them do that. They, they know better. But not everybody's kid is like my kid, you know, and they go up there and they grab stuff. And I'm like, that's just gross. So personally, I don't like buffets, but I did, I used to eat out at, at a Golden Corral every year at Thanksgiving just because it was easier than fixing it all and having to wash everything and all the cleanup and all the mess and it's easier just to go out and get a meal with everybody and we would all meet up together everybody got a good meal and then that was it but uh, it's been a couple of years since I've actually done that so yes to answer your question 
I, I can't eat out very, very much. But we eat a lot in because I'm vegan, so it's really hard to find a restaurant where you can actually sit down and eat something other than a salad. And I don't want to go out to eat, pay $12, $15 for a salad. So I just eat a lot at home. Um, let's see, Ryan. You just mentioned bed bug dogs. I thought about possibly getting one. What's your thoughts on how efficient they are? I think I, if I'm going to get a bed bug dog, I'm going to get a... What is that dog, Alicia? Springer Spaniel? A Springer Spaniel. But the people that we were looking at using, they offer free retraining yearly for the life of the dog. Yeah. A lot yeah, of but they're like nine, eight to $10,000 a dog. It's ten, they start at 10000 Yeah. So they start at 10000 but he gives lifetime uh, retraining so that your dog is always retrained. He's out of West Virginia, I think. Um, Pestwick says, personally, I think you're the best hunter. I think I'm the best hunter. I do. Um, do you eat bugs? I had a friend make a pie with cricket flour. No, I don't eat animals, so I'm vegan. So no, I don't eat bugs. I have eaten bugs. I have eaten bugs. I have. I've eaten mealworms before. I have eaten a mealworm or two before just to gross people out because they're harmless. But, yes, I have done. I've done that. But bugs typically eat me. I usually don't eat bugs. Uh, in Georgia, it's per room no matter what, and they don't come back for another treatment in Georgia. They love heat treatments, and thanks to you, I know that's not going to help. Some houses it does, but it's too expensive, and I would rather just spend the money on Crossfire and save money. Uh, Pestwork says, oh, man, I wish I missed the Golden Corral. Haven't ate at one of those for years. Just take your daughter, it sounds like. <laughs> Pestwork says, I need to just take Emma with me. To go and crowd? No, to, to check for bed bugs. So if I don't catch oh, them, yeah. she will. Because she could find them in 50 minutes. Both kids. Both but Rory kids. did the same thing. So I got called on a midnight bed bug job one time. And the guy had already had two other exterminators that came in and cleared. In fact, the last guy that came in told him he was crazy. Didn't know what he was talking about. It wasn't bed bugs. It must just be in his head. And we went up there. And within the first 10 minutes of being inside the apartment, my son, who was only 12, found bed bugs. So, but I train my kids. I teach my kids how to look for stuff like that. <laughs> Vegans should be able to eat bugs because they don't really have feelings and need to suffer. Bugs, not vegans. I know. <laughs> Funny. Well, the thing is, I just don't want to crunch one in my mouth and feel it squirt. I mean, what, do you eat them raw? Or do you cook them? If they're raw, you know, sometimes you step on a bug, it makes such a nasty, splatty, squishy noise. I don't want to feel that in my mouth. I mean, what is it, like Pop Rocks or something? What would it be? That's disgusting. That's just, I, I'm going to stop talking about that. That's just gross. But a buffet in the cruise ship. Washy, washy. Washy, washy. Happy, happy. My, I like to cruise. I miss cruising. If, if, if 2020 was anything cruising i like to cruise i do i enjoy cruising so i had a customer give me some tamales was super nice finally did the inspection for rats and rat feces were in the cabinetry where all the flour was yeah yeah i've seen that so I saw some ranch-flavored crickets they had at the candy store. I thought about getting on here. I just can't do it. I mean, I have these milestones, all right? So with YouTube, I have milestones that I, that I reach. And right now, I have 12,680 subscribers, all right? I've had 278 additional subscribers in the last month. So I get about two to 300 subs a month to my channel. I would like to get to 100,000 subscribers. I've already passed the 10,000 mark, and I wanted to do something special for the 10,000 mark. And I've been working on this 
thing with the bed bugs trying to get it out, but it's just taking me forever to get it done. And here I am, sailed past 10,000, almost to 13,000. <sighs> so, do I have any bugs that just gross me out? Uh, Alicia, what bugs gross you out? No reviews. Is that it? Reviews were like, those three spiders are my, my most loathed thing. So, Le my wife hates... The more legs, the worse they are. Yeah, she says the more legs a bug has, the worse they are. She's grossed out by centipedes, millipedes, and spiders. But the thing is, I crawl under houses for a living. I can't worry about bugs and stuff. They don't bother me. They, they just don't. They don't. So, I see, I'm looking, I'm reading in the chat, and Pestworks and Ryan are both swapping nasty rat stories. Um... But let me, so I'll tell you a story about a Chinese restaurant. So this is the way you start a good story. If you got pest control and you're doing pest control, you're performing pest control, and, they, and a tech looks at you and says, let me tell you about this Chinese restaurant. You already know it's going to be a really good story. But, so... I went in this Chinese restaurant. I had to go in at 10 o'clock at night because they wanted to, to service the restaurant before they before they closed. You know, they were closing down everything, getting ready, everything all closed up, and they didn't have any customers in the restaurant. I typically like to go really early in the morning before the restaurant opens, uh, usually two, three hours before the restaurant opens, and then, uh, but they wanted me to come at close, so we went to close. And it was a, me and my dad, it's actually when I still worked for my father, uh, we were t there together. And he did the clean out service on the kitchen, and I serviced the whole rest of the restaurant. And so I went in, and they had this closet in there uh, behind the counter where the lady would take it, the money uh, and they would order takeout. So they had a takeout counter, and then behind this curtain that had this big grease smear in the middle, because uh, the curtain's never taken down. It's just disgusting. Behind that curtain was a big, huge buffet room where they had the Chinese buffet sitting out there. So, um, yeah, and I don't, I don't, if Ryan says I will never eat at Chinese. Yes, I, I agree. But, so there was this cabinet, not a cabinet, more like a closet, behind the lady that took the money for the orders. And in that closet, they had a box about, ah, see, I can't really show it on camera. Um, I don't know, maybe three feet wide by two feet deep. It was a big, big, deep uh, cardboard box, and it was lined in plastic. And inside that cardboard box were fried wonton noodles. So in the morning, they would come in, first thing in the morning, and they would make this big, huge box of, of fried noodles. And so in that box, and maybe they just made them at the first of the week, I don't know, there's a lot of noodles. And so they had this little thing hanging on the door with all these little baggies in it. They would pull the baggie out, and they would take this scoop that was hanging off a doorknob, and they would scoop it up, and they would put them in the bag, and they would roll it up, and they would give it to the customer, whether it was their, uh, you know, their takeout, whether it was a, what the egg drop soup or whatever that the people ordered. And so when I opened that closet door, there were roaches sitting all on top of those noodles, live roaches all on top of those noodles, all around the flaps of the box, living inside the corrugations of the box. And as soon as that light shined in that closet, because it was dark before I opened the door, as soon as I opened the door, the light shines in, and all those roaches were like, oh, crap, and they ran down into the box. And so they didn't run outside the box. They ran down into all the noodles, all up underneath the noodles where they could be shaded from the light, the horrible light. And so you know this is happening like all during the day, when the, when the people are going in there and they're ordering food and they're going and they're taking, they're scooping them up and they're putting the, the noodles in those things and they're serving them to people. And in every single buffet, so, so the buffet, it was a double buffet and it had the plates that receded down into the buffet line and on every single plate there were roaches living. Like where the bottom plate was, you know, so, so, so the way those things work is they take the plates and they sit them on it, and it's spring-loaded, so they, they sink down with the weight. So when a person pulls a plate off, the next plate comes up, and the next person pulls the plate off, and the next one comes up. And if they never run out of plates, 
then that bottom plate never gets changed. So there were roaches living on that bottom plate. They were, they were, it was black. It was black with roach poop. It was so disgusting. And they didn't take that plate out even at nighttime. I mean, this is not something that happens in just one, one night. This is something that happens over months of leaving that plate in that buffet and never taking it out, never washing it, never cleaning it. They just sit other clean plates right on top of it. It was covered in roaches and poop and everything that they had uh, paneling in the, in the, uh, in the dining room and every groove in the panel board, uh, there were roaches living in it. I took the, the, the napkins, the napkin holders on the table and, uh, I would take and I would like bang it like this and about 50 roaches would fall out of every single napkin holder on the table. Um, it was pretty horrific. It was, it was really bad. There wasn't a single crack in that restaurant that there weren't German cockroaches living in. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy horrible. But, yeah, so. If, the only, if only the public knew what they were eating, it does not matter what culture that you come from. And that's absolutely true. It really doesn't matter. I went to a McDonald's um, one time, and I don't ever eat at McDonald's anymore. I haven't eaten at McDonald's in years. But I was probably 28, 29 maybe, and I, I pulled into McDonald's and I was eating a fish fillet sandwich. That's my favorite. That's my favorite sandwich to get at McDonald's. And I was sitting back near the bathrooms, and they have this chair rail molding, and uh, German Roach crawled out of the chair rail, crawled down, went down, and went up in a napkin holder on the table. So well, you know, you, you say it's no, no culture thing, which is, you know... Oh yeah, Rory eats like a true bachelor. I'm going to start using paper plates at Chinese buffet. <laughs> well, the thing. All right, so so here's the thing. So I, I service a lot of people that live in the city and and that they go to this Chinese buffet. They actually patron this Chinese buffet, this specific place, and they get roaches from the buffet. And they know they're getting roaches from the buffet. And I tell them, don't eat there. You're bringing roaches in from the buffet. You are paying me a lot of money because they it's a maintenance. They have to have me come to their house. If they didn't have me come to their house regularly, they would have to give up their Chinese buffet. And they still go there. And the lady's like, well, the food is just so good. It's so good. And I'm just like, but it's got roach shit in it, and they're crawling in it, and they're just, why do you think it tastes the way it does? Because it's got bugs in it. You're eating bugs. You don't even realize you're eating bugs. She's like, oh, no, I don't think that's true. And I'm like, I've seen them crawling in the food. I know that the bugs are in the food. <laughs> I have seen it myself. It doesn't change from one day to the next. There's still bugs in that food. <laughs> but if you look at those videos, like, some of it is cultural because if, if you look at some of the videos from like the Chinese wet markets and stuff and you see the bugs crawling all over the food and they just take it, they buy it, they take it home and they eat it. And it's like, it's, it's like, ooh, ooh, oh, I've just, maybe I'm just a spoiled rotten American and I don't want to eat bugs, but I don't want to eat bugs. I just don't want to eat bugs. So. Actually, that that um that was a one hundred and twenty dollar clean out. Pest works. If you were wondering, that's how much we charged for that job. And I didn't leave the restaurant until one o'clock in the morning. We definitely got over uh, underpriced that job. Uh, MC Roxas says, "Tell your wife to look up a whip scorpion on Google Images and tell me if she thinks it looks scary." Somebody says to look up a whip scorpion on Google Images and tell them if it looks scary. They said for you to do it. They want to hear your reaction. A wh whip? Whip. Like a whip whip. it good. You know. Oh, okay. A whip scorpion. A whip scorpion. Okay. She's playing a video game. She ain't going to do that. I'll go, I'll go look it up. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that looks pretty cool. I think scorpions look neat. Yeah, she's she's terrified. She's gonna be scared of that. That's gonna scare her. 
Oh yeah, that's in that thing. Yeah, but look at it. That's still pretty cool. Still not as bad as a centipede. She says still not as bad as a centipede. Or a millipede. Or a millipede. Uh, Pestwork says factories have a threshold of how many possible insects can be in a product. Yes, they do. A threshold, which means before that threshold is meet, there, there's bugs in there. Not only that, but rats and mice too. So, CR says, I hate bed bugs. Me too. I don't like bed bugs either. I hate bed bugs. But I got pet bed bugs. I usually bring them out and show them on every stream, but I have to show them tonight. Let's pull these babies out. There's a couple. Right there. There's one there. And this, in case you're wondering, is a feeder tube. It's got a screen. And you can uh, open it. See? It's just a screen. So they can breathe. So they don't suffocate in there. So. And you can just breathe in it. Like that. And they'll start, they're like, ooh, that smells like dinner. Somebody just rang my dinner bell. There they are. Anyway. Bed bugs. Because people ask me, what do they look like? And I collect them. So I've got these little vials when I go to work. And the only reason I have them is for YouTube. So I can show you what they look like. Maybe I'll collect some other interesting bugs when I'm on the job. Well, that is about an hour and a half I've been here, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. There hadn't been as many questions tonight as usual, but like always, you guys are great. I really, I really appreciate you showing up, asking me questions, and conversing with me. I am going to head on out, head on to bed. You guys have a really great night. I really appreciate it, and remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me. And uh, every Thursday night, I will be back to answer more questions. So hopefully, I will see you there. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good night.